The legal system can be confusing and overwhelming to most people. To help individuals and corporations understand and apply the law, attorneys, who are more commonly called lawyers, counsel clients about their legal rights and obligations, and suggest particular courses of action in both business and personal matters. The more routine and most common tasks of a lawyer include drawing up legal documents, such as wills and contracts, while the more visible tasks involve trying cases in a court of law. To effectively carry out these duties, lawyers must be able to interpret complex legal documents and apply them to the appropriate situations. If you're interested in practicing law, you should be intelligent, well-spoken, and determined, willing to work long and irregular hours. Excellent research skills are also essential, since the more you know about a case and related historical information, the better chance you have of winning the case. This occupation also requires an ability to deal with people in a courteous and efficient manner. Perhaps the most important quality a lawyer can possess is that of moral and ethical integrity. A successful representative of this profession is a person who is honest in every aspect of the job. If you can live up to all of these demanding qualities and duties, a fulfilling career in law may be the right profession for you. So with that, let's move on to our second topic today. We're going to talk about providing notice under the Open Meetings Act. The Act requires that each governmental body shall give written notice of the date, hour, place, and subject of every meeting of the governmental body. Now with regard to the subject matter, the notice must be sufficient to inform the general public of the subjects that the governmental body is going to consider during the meeting. And I think the best way to analyze this sort of issue is to look at a hypothetical notice and see whether it is sufficient. So here we have a notice for a meeting of the Tejas City Council. It has listed the date, the hour, and the place of the meeting. And then the first subject to be considered is the mayor's report. Does that subject provide sufficient notice of what is going to be addressed at the meeting? No. It tells you who is speaking. The mayor is going to give a report. But that language alone is insufficient as a matter of law to describe the subject matter of the meeting. Now, if this notice listed what the mayor was going to discuss under mayor's report, that would be fine. But the inclusion of boilerplate language like this by itself is insufficient under the Act to provide proper notice. We regularly see meeting notices that, in, that include language like old business or new business or executive director's report. All of those, all, all, the use of boilerplate language like that in all of those instances is insufficient under the Act. So if your governmental body is using language like that, you need to reconsider your agenda preparation and make sure that you're providing more detail about the subjects that are going to be considered at your meeting. Hello, Mr. Hicks. My name is Andre Lagergren, and I live in Horizon City, Texas. And for the past couple of months now, I've been attending several union bargaining meetings between the Horizon City, Texas Police Department uh, Union, uh, represented by CLEAT. Um, I forget the exact wording of the acronym, but that's the name of their union, CLEAT. And uh, it's the bargaining is between the union, union members of the Horizon City, Texas Police Department, which is, as far as I know, all of the officers are part of the union. And then it's between the union and the town government of Horizon City, Texas. Now, the reason I'm creating videos regarding these meetings originally was just to document the meetings themselves. But as I started documenting the meetings, I noticed... Uh, one concrete, indisputable um, violation of the Texas Open Meetings Act, and there's several other incidences that I believe are very possibly also um, violations of the Texas Open Meetings Act, but I would need a, a, a trained law enforcement officer or a lawyer who is familiarized with the Texas Open Meetings Act to be 100% sure that the other incidents I know of are uh, also violations of the Texas Open Meetings Act, but I am dead certain 
that on February 28th, 2024, um, <clears throat> the first union bargaining meeting between the police union and the town government of Run City, Texas, that there was a violation of the Texas Open Meetings Act, uh, first and foremost, because the notice that was posted for that meeting was not in compliance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. It was not um, sufficient enough in its description. It was extremely vague, very ambiguous. And um, it, it, there was no question in my mind. Uh, even when I first looked at it as a completely novice person to the Texas Open Meetings Act, I literally, at the time, earlier this year, had an extremely limited knowledge of the Texas Open Meetings Act. I only knew the name of the statute itself. Other than that, I, I, it never concerned me before because I normally just did open record to quest. Um, so I had to get myself up to speed on a lot of things. But uh, even at that point, when I was completely a novice in the Texas Open Meetings Act, uh, a few months ago, a couple months ago, uh, in late February, um, even at that point, I could still tell that that notice was not in compliance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, because at least I knew that, is that the notice had to be descriptive and have an agenda, uh, you know, describing, you know, what was going to be discussed and the subjects and all that. It didn't have any of that. Um, so that right there was a violation. But like I said, there's many other issues that I'd like to discuss with the um, El Paso County, Texas District Attorney's Office. Um, as you might be aware... I've already emailed one member of your staff, uh, a female. I'm not sure if she's a lawyer or a paralegal, but uh, she did respond to me by email, and we had a phone call. Um, so I have made your office, I have made the people that work for you aware of, of what I'm alleging. So um, I'll just keep on making my videos and doing research, and uh, you can just keep doing your district attorney thing. I know you're a busy man, and you're dealing with all sorts of horrible crimes, uh, like murder and robbery and all sorts of stuff I can't possibly imagine. I, I mean, I can't even possibly imagine how stressful it is for a guy like you to do a job you do. I mean, that's just, that would be too overwhelming for me. Um, so I, I'm, I'm proud you do what you do, and I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to make you drop everything for this, but I just, I'm doing what I can to make you and your people aware that, uh, that these meetings between the, Horizon City, Texas Police Department and the town government of Horizon City, Texas, I do not believe that they're being uh, conducted in compliance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, especially the first meeting on February 28th, 2024. Um, in, regards for, to, in regards for the uh, Texas Open Meetings Act violations, that's all I have for right now to give you just a very brief description uh, like just a, a bird's eye view of what's going on here, at least in my opinion of what's going on here. And, um, but before I go, I'd like to also let you know that, uh, running alongside the Texas Open Meetings Act violations in parallel with that, uh, I am also by accident, uh, by coincidence, because I started looking into, uh, legal expense records for other reasons. I am now finding myself, uh, presented with evidence of what I believe is possible overcharges uh, by the city attorney to the town government of Horizon City, Texas, which opens a whole nother can of worms, as you probably can imagine. And I will be uh, writing separate letters to both your office and other institutions in the state of Texas regarding that in the future. But for right now, um, I just want you to be aware of the Texas Open Meetings Act violations that I believe are occurring in Horizon City, Texas in the year 2024 uh, between the, in regards to the meetings being conducted between the Horizon City Police Department Union and the town government of Horizon City, Texas. All right, uh, Mr. Hicks, well, thank you for your service and thanks for, uh, especially with that case with uh, Patrick Crucius, the Walmart shooter, thank you for putting uh, every ounce of energy you have into that case and trying to bring justice to the people of El Paso, Texas. I know you're always trying to bring justice to the people of, of El Paso County and, and Hudspeth County and Culberson County 
regardless of what crime it is, but I know that especially with that mega crime of the El Paso Walmart shooter, that uh, that was like probably the biggest challenge of your life. So anyway, thanks for everything you do. And um, here's the video, and I'll be in touch with your people at the El Paso County, Texas District Attorney's Office. All right, sir. Have a good, uh, good rest of the summer of 2024. Hey, sir. How are you? Hello. How's everything? Uh, I have some concerns. What's up, buddy? You want to talk now, or you want to wait till after? The uh, no. I think you've got probably some things you need to do. So. We well, actually, they're going to have to. They had asked that we can kind of postpone the meeting just a couple of minutes. Because oh, okay. They're waiting on some on some folks. So. Uh, I don't know if it's something you want to bring up. You want to talk about now, or you want to set up an appointment, or? Uh, well, no, it doesn't have to be all formal like that. I'm okay. Just, uh, I feel at the very least I'd like to mention, again, which I, I don't know if I mentioned it directly to you before, but I've mentioned it to your clerk, um, and I also put it in writing in, in more than one email. At least I did one today, but also at least one in the past. Yes, sir. Um, and the first issue that I have is is that. On February 28th, 2024, the notice for that meeting was not done properly. The notice for the initial uh, deliberation meeting between the, the... For the negotiation for CBA. Right, for the police okay. union and the town government? Yes, sir. Yeah, that, 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 that's one big issue right there if we don't talk about anything else. Okay. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, um, and, and I'll talk to legal to make sure that everything was done correctly from what my understanding everything was done mm -hmm. properly and per per the law per state law so um so I'll, I'll review that with them just just to make sure that everything's everything's on the up and up and i want to make sure that everything here in harvest is done is in the way it's supposed to be yes sir and, and going hand in hand with that uh issue that i just brought up is that a few days later the city clerk and she actually personally handed me a copy and i forget exactly what day it was um, the city clerk then created another document because the original notice was posted by Lieutenant Casey Valdez on February 15th. Okay. And Do you mind if I write all this down? Just that way. Sure. So initial, initial notice was on February 15th, correct? Yeah, Lieutenant Casey Valdez did it, and she apparently has always been doing the notices for all the past uh, union meetings. Uh, when I say all, I mean the past couple, because I guess the union only was created in like 2017. Yes, sir. But, um, so yeah, it was February 15th, Lieutenant Valdez posted a notice and, um, you know, I, 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 was, I, I was no expert then, and I'm, I was definitely no expert then, but I've learned a little bit more now, but, but even as not being an expert in the Texas Open Meetings Act, mm -hmm. I could tell that that notice was definitely not uh, in compliance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. It was very vague, and uh, it had no agenda. I called Adam Bastios and Elvia Schuler, the, the records clerk and the town clerk, and both of them openly admitted they never even created an, ag uh, an agenda. Uh, she said she took no minutes, and um, initially she wasn't even aware that the union deliberation meetings between the town government and the police union that the Texas Open Meetings Act even applied at all. So that later got cleared up on March 18th by the city attorney. Mm -hmm. But initially, uh, the town clerk, she, as far as she was concerned, the Texas Open Meetings Act didn't even apply. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, I'll, so I'll, I'll go over this and make sure that everything's documented correctly and make sure that everything was done correctly per and per our if there were any issues they um you know we, we are now um at the end of april going into may and I, you know i'm sure that they would have you know notified me saying hey you know what there, there was a, a mistake but not nobody has notified me yet of that mm -hmm. so um but i'll go ahead and review that with them just to make sure so, yes sir uh, cool, cool. Los Armando.
Good morning, Armando. This is Andre. Yes, sure. I can help you. Yes, I got your email this morning um, regarding the the public meeting on February 28th the, yes, in sir. the afternoon. Yes, yes sir. Uh, but all I received from you in this email was the uh, the oh, notice. Yes. Um, right. Yeah, I still I need the agenda. Yeah, that's all we have for that. You got to speak to Alvia. Uh, according to her, there was no agenda because there's there was no specific items discussed. Um, but I would have to get you over to her to to get details on that. I that's all I have. Is that something you want me to do? Get you over to her? Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, I'd like to speak to her. Yeah, let me get her for you, sir. Give me one second. Okay. This is Elvia Schuler. May I help you? Good morning, Miss Schuler. This is Andre. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, we haven't actually uh, interacted directly before, but we've spoken on the phone in the past. I'm sure you know who I am. Um, I just yes. had some questions about the afternoon meeting on February 28th with the police union and the city of Horizon City. Yes, sir. Yes, um, I'm having problems uh, with uh, the answers I'm getting from Armando. Um, he's saying that you don't have an agenda for the meeting. It's It's a posting, sir. The, the reason for the actual items, it, it, it's described in the actual posting, and the reason for it is we don't know what the officers are going to be bringing to the table until they do. So that discussion happens when they come into the meeting. So just like this last meeting that we just had, you notice that we didn't really have a, a specific topic. They have to tell us what it is that they want to negotiate. It's a negotiations meeting, so it's not an actual pre-planned uh, meeting with agenda items and that type of thing. So the posting is put on there, so anybody who wants to join, the public can join the meeting if, if they'd like, um, and the negotiations will, ha will happen at the table. That's how we do it. And that's how we've always had it since 2000. I want to say we started negotiating in 2017, maybe. Well, ...was not satisfied with the outco outgoing El Paso City Attorney. Hello, I'm Erica Castillo. I'm Robert Olguin. KFOX 14 Investigates obtained the latest job evaluation for Sylvia Borunda Firth. Our chief investigative reporter, Genevieve Curtis, is live in the studio with the results of that evaluation. That story's first on Fox. Jen. Well, this latest review shows counsel wasn't happy with its legal counsel and suggests Sylvia Firth was pushed out. This comes one day after they agreed to give her a more than $270,000 severance package. Questions would be, why did this occur? It was just mutually agreed to given... Um, I knew where we stood as a yesterday the mayor telling us he knew a change needed to happen today we're learning why several council members giving Firth low marks on her 2017 review when it came to things like communication with council and her relationship with council council members suggested Firth didn't disclose conflicts of interest or perceived conflicts of interest Council also wanted justification for Firth hiring her sister, who's also an attorney, in 2014 to work on the collective bargaining agreement with the firefighter union. You'll remember the city failed to negotiate a resolution, so the contract went to the voters. City Rep Alexandra Anello wrote Firth often gives her personal opinion rather than just provide legal facts. Northeast Rep Sam Morgan also says Firth needs to develop a trusted, functional relationship with the city manager. And Eastside Rep Michael No wrote she needs to trust counsel and stop withholding information. Several reps also raised questions about the excessive amount of cases assigned to outside counsel. And council members also wrote they didn't think Firth was proactive in addressing legal issues before they became problems. Her last day with the city is officially May 31st. Reporting live in the studio, Genevieve Curtis, KFOX 14, Investigate.
from. This is Aaron. How may I help you? Hello, Aaron. This is Andre in Horizon City. Hey, Andre. <clears throat> yes, sir. I was calling about a uh, open records request, which I submitted on April 17th last week. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. I was. Um, I just wanted to inquire about the open records request because uh, I haven't received any response, and um, this is information that should be readily available. Okay. Uh, so... So you're just calling the status uh, on, on that information request? Uh, yes, and, you know, I, I feel that I should have already received this information since it should be readily available, and the uh, legislature considers information like this to be what they call core information or super public information. Okay. Um, I, I know with the information request there is a 10 business days or – I forget if it's calendar days or business days, but there is a 10-day uh, um, deadline. So I'll go ahead and reach out um, to, I believe, uh, Desiree and Nicole and see uh, the status of that uh, request that you you made on the 17th, correct? Yes, one week ago on the 17th. But I would like to uh, address something you just said regarding the 10-day uh, uh, deadline, where there is uh -huh. a 10-day deadline, but the Texas Attorney General's Office has specifically addressed what you just said, and that is that, that that mentality, that culture of saying, oh, well, there's a 10-day deadline, that's incorrect. That's, that's the incorrect culture to have uh, for any municipal government because what the legislature actually said is that all records that are releasable are to be released promptly. And by promptly, that um, <clears throat> could mean different things for different records. So if a, a records request is complex and deals with a lot of records that are redacted promptly might mean, um, you know, several weeks. But if it's super uh, public information, core information, such as legal expenses charged to a municipal government, promptly would mean immediately. Uh, generally, if, if it's really available information, it should be produced within one to three days, in my opinion. Um, so that that's this concept where the – because the you, – you, and. This is not the only municipal government that says this to me. So I'm bringing this up not to just attack your law firm and the town of Horizon City, but this is for all municipal governments in the state of Texas that um, that is the wrong attitude to have towards that 10 day deadline. That is not how it's supposed to be used. Uh, the, the concept is to be promptly um, and whatever the record is, um, if, if, if it's something that's readily available, then promptly means less than 10 days, uh, you know, as fast as possible. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not working on the request, so I don't know the status of it. I was just, uh, I was just uh, saying that because I know they, that there is a, a deadline, but I, I understand your, I understand your, uh, that you, you believe it, it should have been released promptly. So I'll go ahead and get the message over to them, um, Andre, um, on the status of that uh, request made last week. Uh, in addition, I'd like for you to uh, – I don't know if you're writing this down, but I, I'd like yeah. for you to leave a note for, uh, I guess, it's Desiree Duarte and uh, Nicole Hip Follower that are dealing with this open records request. I'd uh -huh. like you to leave a note for them that um, this this whole concept of the 10-day uh, the deadline, um, that in regards to this particular open records request, and this is what I've dealt with over the years with other open records requests, but now I'm addressing it with this particular open records request is that the 10-day 10 10 deadline is being abused in bad faith by Borges Law Firm because this is uh, super public information, core information as described by the Texas State Legislature. It's supposed to be readily available. Um, this, is, this type of information, legal expenses charged to a municipal government are the most public, super public information that's supposed to be readily available to the public. So there's no need, there's, there's no excuse for taking 10, de 10 days to produce this information. And so in my opinion, this is um, a delay tactic, a bad faith delay tactic by Borokes Law Firm uh, to, to delay my open records request as long as possible. And then there's been other occasions where with other records requests, uh, there's been delay tactics and there's also been um, outright stonewalling tactics. So just the, the overall culture of Borokes Law Firm um, and the Texas or and the uh, Horizon City Texas Town Government uh, has repeatedly engaged in this behavior of 
delay tactics and bad faith um, stonewalling tactics. Um, and believe it or not, everything I've dealt with through the town government of Horizon State, Texas, and Borkis Law Firm, you guys aren't even the worst. I've dealt with much, much worse. So I will give you credit for that is that I often, or not often, but I, I generally ultimately do get my records eventually, but um, th this behavior has to stop where I, if, I, if I ask for something like super public information of legal expenses charged to the town of Horizon City, Texas, like I said, that, that type of information, I should have gotten that within one to three days. I should have gotten that um, before the weekend. I asked for it on Wednesday last week. I should have had it before the weekend, in my opinion. Um, so this, this, this using the 10 days automatically, uh, especially for information like that, that's, that's a bad faith abuse of the, uh, of the Texas Public Information Act. And uh, it, it's, in my opinion, it's unlawful behavior. And it's piling on to other, um, it, it, it's a pattern of behavior is what I'm trying to say. Okay. I hear you, Andre. I'm sorry that you, that you feel that way. I will go ahead and, and I will I have wrote down your your comment to them and I'll go ahead and get that message over to them and 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 ask about uh the status of that open records request. Yes, and the one last thing I'd like to add is that um concrete proof of everything I just said within the last uh, minute or two about, you know, bad faith uh delay tactics and stonewalling tactics. Um concrete proof of that is the fact that Desiree Duarte herself signed a document which was recently sent to me where she had to abandon uh, a Texas Attorney General opinion request. So she had to withdraw that request, and that's in black and white. It's written down on paper. She signed it, and she had to abandon that request and withdraw that request specifically because I put in writing, a, uh, I believe it was on April 5th, um, basically everything I just said on the phone within the last couple minutes uh, about bad faith delay tactics and stonewalling tactics. So I wrote that letter earlier this month, and in response to that letter, she had to abandon and withdraw her request to the Texas Attorney General for an advisory opinion of one of my open records requests. And the reason she had to do that is because I know that she uh, was, was trapped in a corner because the records I was requesting, there was, there was absolutely no exemption. The, the, the Texas Public Information Act, the one of the first, or I believe it is the first uh, part of the statute, there's many, many sections, but the very first portion is that the Texas legislature makes it abundantly clear that all records are presumed, presumed open to the public. And that's where you start from. And if there's an exemption that applies, then the government can, uh, you know, restrict access to certain records. But instead, what a lot of governments do, municipal governments, and I guess, you know, state governments throughout the state, what a lot of these local governments will do is um, they will presume secrecy of these records and make the uh, records requester fight an uphill battle to get records that are supposed to be presumed open to the public. And that's not what the Texas legislature uh, intended when it created the Texas Public Information Act back in the 1960s and the 1970s. So I presented my complaint in writing to Desiree Duerte uh, on April 5th, earlier this month, and she had to withdraw her request to the Texas Attorney General for a bad faith advisory opinion request, which again, that request was submitted, uh, I strongly believe, as a deliberate delay tactic to, uh, to delay and or stonewall me from obtaining records regarding one of the um, uh, the crimes that happened in this town that I'm investigating as a journalist. So there was a crime that happened. I was asking for records uh, that dealt with that crime. And there's the, that particular request for the type of records I was asking for, um, any experienced municipal government uh, attorney should know that those particular records uh, would not be exempt from release. And what Borokas Law Firm uh, Desiree Duarte did on behalf of Bork as law firm. Instead, what happened is, is she uh, submitted a bad faith. Um, now, this is my opinion, but I strongly believe this, is that she submitted a bad faith uh, request to the Texas Attorney General's office for 
an advisory opinion that was not necessary since the records were already releasable. And any experienced municipal government attorney worth their salt would have known that, and she did know that. And that's why once she was trapped in the corner, she was forced to withdraw her request. And so that's the reason I'm bringing up that little story is because, in my opinion, that is concrete proof that uh, needs to be uh, added along with the complaint I'm making today about not releasing the uh, most recent request I've made for the legal expenses, uh, the, the legal expense documents that I requested last week. Um, now we're talking, like I said, super public information, core information that the Texas legislature has made clear in statute. Not just a case law, but a statute. There's an actual statute. I'd have to look it up. But there's a statute that describes what I'm talking about. Super public information, core information, legal expenses is, is, is uh, definitely in that category. So uh, trying to use the 10-day uh, delay to release that type of information, what I'm saying is that there better be a, a really good reason why it took so long to release that information because that does not fit the definition of promptly. And promptly, it's a very important word when talking about the Texas Public Information Act when it comes to the statute and the case law, um, because, you know, it, it, it's not supposed to be abused the way it is, it's the way the uh, town government of Horizon City, Texas, and the board has lost them is doing it, where they say, oh, well, we have 10 days. No. For a certain type well, of information, I mean, you do not have 10 days. So, Andre, I, I don't know. I don't work on the open records. I wasn't saying that they, they're waiting on 10 days. I'm just saying that. Uh, a possibility they haven't reached out back yet is because of of that 10 day uh, deadline. But I I don't I don't have access to the records. I don't uh, work on them, so I I can't tell you exactly why they ha you haven't heard a response. But I mean, what I can do is just reach out, let them know your 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 comments, and let them know uh, that you feel that they're using bad faith, stonewalling for the for. For these records, and that you you believe that it was, or uh, you read that it was, uh, you said um, core. Yeah, the, the two terms used by the Texas Attorney General in the uh, Texas Public Information Act training, which is on video, is you uh -huh. could use either one of two terms. It's either core information or uh -huh. super or public. Super Both mean the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go ahead and let them know. But I mean, I I don't know why that uh, they. they haven't hasn't been released uh like i said i don't work on them um but I, i'll get that message over to them and i will leave your uh, contact information so they can reach out to you i apologize if uh my voice and demeanor came across as adversarial i have nothing against you personally no I, I i understand andre i mean i understand that uh you're passionate for for what you do and we appreciate uh people that that serve for their community so there's no no animosity. I, I do I do understand that it it can be get frustrating, and I'll, I'll let them uh, I'll let them know that just th th your comments on that, and and they, they should be reaching out pretty shortly. Yes, sir. Uh, you seem like a very nice man, and it's not my intention to shoot the messenger. And again, I apologize. Yeah. No, no worries. Uh, yes, sir. Um, and I again I I, ne I, I definitely don't want to. Uh, create an atmosphere where you, you are becoming my personal secretary, so I'm about to jump off the phone, but before I do, uh, I, I assume you've been writing something down, and I would like you to just add one last thing to the notes that you took. Okay. And that is, is that I would like a message to go to Desiree Duarte and to all the lawyers at Borges Law Firm, especially, I would like this message to also go to Alan Borges himself. And this message is, all the lawyers at Borges Law Firm, you people are lawyers, and you are supposed to be guardians of the Texas and federal constitution. Okay. All righty. So I'll go ahead and write that up. Actually, I guess it's plural. I, I said constitution. It should be constitutions. Yeah. Constitutions. Okay.
I had 100 tricks out. I'll go ahead and get that message over to Desiree and Nicole, and I'll also write up the your statement um, to the board quest uh, attorneys as well. Yes, sir, and uh, I respectfully insist that this message specifically go to Alan Borges himself. You know, it's not a five on fire, but at some point, if he could please get a copy of this, I, I specifically, I want it to go to all the lawyers, but especially him. Okay. And I appreciate your patience and, uh, and uh, you know, taking my call today, and uh, thank you for everything you do. All right, Andre, have a wonderful day. Thank you, Aaron. I'll be in touch.